an old model steam engine which was made circa 1896, part 9, machining some brass in my milling machine which will be accurately made into the pair of crank webs that I need, using the four jaw chuck on my Myford ML7R lathe. I would not normally make crank webs from a piece of brass, but if you look at the original ones, they are brass, and I want it to sort of still look like the engine did originally. I was going to use this piece of steel, which would be much stronger, but it's all relative to the strength of the other parts of the engine, which are not very strong. Why didn't I just buy a piece of brass the right size? Well, I have lots of pieces of scrap brass like this, which was something I cut off a big slab of brass a while back. So I crudely chopped this in half, and very shortly using my milling machine, I'm going to make a matched pair of brass blocks that I probably won't use because this piece of brass is a bit too big. Had I have bought a piece of brass, then I couldn't have made a video about milling brass as I'm going to show you in this one. In this clip I'm having a close look at one of the original crank webs and I can see the scratch mark where the crank and crank pin positions were originally marked out. That's useful. For now though I'm not too concerned with making the crank webs. What I'm trying to show in this video is how to make two accurately sized parts from something that is not accurate in the slightest. A piece of brass cut on the band saw will eventually end up as two pieces exactly the same as each other that I will be able to fit together in a four jaw chuck and drill and ream the centres. Generally speaking brass is very easy to machine. Unless you have a blunt cutting tool then it's much more difficult. This particular milling cutter is extremely sharp. It's from a milling cutter set that I bought from RDG Tools quite a while back and so far I've only destroyed one of them and that was my fault. Mainly by rushing the job and not using enough lubricant. It's really important after each milling operation before you change the position of the parts to clean the area thoroughly. You don't want any swarf underneath the part that you're milling. What I'm going to do is put this steel rule that I got from RDG Tools many years ago. It's a 7 inch steel rule. A very sensible length of steel rule. 6 inch ones are always too short. I've placed this rule in position on the bed of the machine vise underneath the part I'm working on. It lifts it up to just where I need it to be. And off we go again. Milling everything as square as possible. These clips are running at a higher speed, four times normal speed to be exact, just to get through it. After machining the two ends of the piece of brass, all I need to do now is lay it down with the suitable packing underneath to make both of the pieces of brass exactly the same size. The good thing about brass is you can take quite deep cuts and it cuts beautifully. But what you have to remember is these chippings that are coming off the brass are razor sharp. Do not under any circumstances touch them with your fingers. And also eye protection is fairly essential. You certainly don't want this stuff in your eyes. It's really health and safety common sense. If you like to live dangerously that's one thing. But getting the job done successfully without damaging yourself is possibly a better idea. The cutter is now getting very close to the machine vise. It's quite important not to machine the actual top of the machine vise. Check this before you start the machine. And there it is, the final cut. I have two brass blocks that are miles too big for the job I want to do. Has it gone mad? No, I haven't. It's just useful to have pieces of brass in my box of brass bits that are the same size as each other for future jobs. I need a much thinner piece for these crank webs. Remachining the blocks to get the crank webs out of them would be very wasteful. This is going to be better. I sat both of the original crank webs on the top of this piece of brass and it looks to me like this is going to be perfect for the job. I'll need to do a lot less milling to get the brass block to be the same shape as the crank webs. I would never make crank webs out of brass. I would always use steel. I want it to resemble what it looked like before. Although the crank web will be 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter, not 5 30 seconds of an inch, which was far too weak. Here I'm measuring the distance between the crank pin and the crank shaft. 
I put this assembly in my three-jaw chuck in the lathe and spotted the end with a centre drill. I can still see the original marking out scratch and so all I have to do is measure from this to the centre of the centre drill hole. And according to my RDG tools 7 inch steel rule the distance between the crankshaft centre and the centre of the crank pin is 5 eighths of an inch. Or thereabouts but it's more than near enough for the tolerances that are already on this engine. It's time now to take these parts down into the smaller workshop in the house. This is where I'll be machining the crank webs. I had a piece of brass left over from when I cut the second thinner parts. I just put it back in my box of brass bits. This piece of brass that you can see I'm going to also take down to the house because I'll chop this up. This will be to prevent the jaws of the four-jaw chuck from marking the work as I machine the parts. And that's it. I have the parts that I'm going to use for the crank webs and if I get that wrong I'll use the blocks and machine it in a different way. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.